In step 7, I will show you how to make the vertical cuts as I did show you before uh, how we do the horizontal cuts or horizontal slabs. So uh, today I'm just going to uh, show you how to cut this geometry or any other geometry you like uh, vertically. So you can uh, uh, create a, like a profile that you can use as a sections or you can further use them to uh, use uh, you know like a slicing tool or slicing cut that you can use for laser cutting uh, anyway uh, if you're wondering how I did this is again uh, the custom note that I have and I show you in the earlier videos that's my outline just at 70 by 70 to switch and change the uh, the crazy shape uh, the curvature and everything in here I took a copy uh, of this uh, vertically uh, like in like a hundred or something and then I scale it uh, by this geometry dot scale almost half an all axis so it will go up and then with the scale by 50 50 50 percent goes in the middle I hide the, uh, the top one which is anyway something uh, I think above here have the distance something like that so to get this shape uh, that's my geometry. Uh, add them both. They scaled up, uh, scaled down in the original geometry. This guy and this guy in a list, and then just create a loft for them both. In case if you don't know how to do the background geometry, it's it's fair and easy. So now let's back to our subject. We need to make a tool that slices everything vertically, like the one that we did in the previous videos. And it's basically the same thing except that uh, it isn't going to start by default from zero. So we need to specify where it's going to start from as a start edge and the start end. And again, we have to make an array for a, a planes that are going to cut that in an intersection the same way we did in the previous video. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to need, we're going to need uh, probably a slider, a numerical slider and this numerical slider actually it, I'm just gonna call it a start and making the minimum uh, minus 100 and have a three sorry actually two copies of it or from it what are we gonna call it end and this guy I'm gonna call it just intervals so probably I'm gonna start from minus 100 end up with a hundred and cut each ten so uh, okay probably we need to hide the solid at least so we actually started to I just started to create this start end or start edge and the end edge of the array and that's the intervals between them so fair and easy just go in here and just make from A to B to C so that's the beginning that's the end this is the intervals and you should have this guy actually giving us the results or nothing it's okay just cancel that guy here it's always happened now <clears throat> sorry you see that's um uh, it's actually started to give us a, a nice sequence of numbers starting from minus 100 to the 100 and jumping each 10 which is that's what we want now what we really need is to uh, have a good What we really need now is to create an object that's going to be arrayed by this array starting from minus 100 ending up to 100. So we need a plane. So that's our plane here. I'm going to zoom into it. So we need a plane. Now we need to rotate that plane. So I'm just going to have a uh, rotate. by axis origin axis and degree so that's 
I'm going to rotate this geometry and the axis I'm going to go Y axis Y because uh, I'm going to move in the X so I have to rotate it around the Y so I, and the degree is just 90 degree just like that and uh, the origin is just a point which is uh, technically is the, the origin zero zero so I'm just gonna add a point and I'm gonna assume that this is my origin of rotation so that goes very well as you can see now we need to hide this guy we don't need him anymore we need this guy so that's that's basically our geometry that's our geometry and that's the rotation so we need to use translate which technically need a geometry which is this guy and we need the array next and we're gonna end up by having our planes running all over the place as you can see and now we need to intersect this geometry which is our hidden solid with, um, with the geometry translate planes and as you can see it's working perfectly and the only annoying thing is uh, you know that you barely see it because it doesn't have edges so it's, it's really annoying when you put them like that and they goes behind each other you don't know where they stop it's kind of I don't know they should Dynamo should like provide better, uh, better viewing options for us anywho so uh, it might sound stupid but uh, I'll just add a surface uh, defining the perimeter curve for each surface for some reason I can't find it it's always you cannot find things when you really need them anyway yep yeah, here we go so that's a perimeter no I need the curve, yep, not the value. So when you connect this guy, uh, probably again you're gonna get a warning message, and probably because it depends on how many uh, reference plane or uh, the planes you have rotated, which is actually not intersect and did not create geometry. In order to understand what happening, because it's really annoying, open the list and you're gonna find you have a twenty or something. Uh, result of the intersection uh, possibilities that you create and um, that, uh, there's four of those did not intersect and then another four on this side which I think did not intersect and I think a 13 or something or I don't know which actually did intersect and when you give this to this guy it tell you that um, it's an error message and he's like some of those guys are not actually making any sense it's not a surfaces to be creating curves per meter for them and that might be annoying and believe it or not this dude is solving the whole thing it's the flatten and when you flatten the thing it's gonna work perfectly and what it simply did is just remove the empty thing you know the empty list or the empty members of this list that cause that to get you know confused so see that's uh, having only uh, 13 which is uh, we get rid of those elements that it's not really actually make any sense so now if you rotate you can see them actually much better as a visualization and uh, you can go ahead and uh, try to re reduce those values to have a less probably members in here uh, if you can't uh, you can actually define a bounding box so you can know exactly how many planes you need and work accordingly without the need to you know get rid of the you know the members which is actually not intersect but I was really lazy to do that that's easier you know like it, it's it's help us with the flatten it's one of the most beautiful uh, use for the flatten tool
now again if you are working to make sections uh, that might be uh, helpful for you but uh, and even for laser cutting but if you wanna if you wanna have something to represent this and you want to see it as a solid elements uh, 3d printing it with a solid actual real thickness so probably we need to use a thicken uh, double sided probably or one sided depending on whatever you want and uh, simply the surfaces that we get from the flatten we don't want it from here and it's going to generate it on both sides as you can see with a default value of one if you want it to be on one sided just go ahead and uh, pick up booleans basically a similar thing to what we've done in the previous uh, video that's that part is the same you can uh, go ahead and have a slider again here numerical slider and uh, I can make it like a 0.5 or 3 or give that a name and then you know you can replace it later on with uh, uh, with anything uh, any uh, input value if you want to make a custom node so you can see that you can control the thickness and you can make the thickness exactly the same amount of the intervals like 10 to get like uh, you know a crazy uh, uh, crazy uh, steps uh, or a model based on a steps like uh, this guy here same what we've done and uh, same what I show you in the presentation or the PowerPoint slides if you want uh, to make it like that a solid model based on a vertical cuts uh, you can just make it a little bit less uglier rather than what we have in here by just making uh, the interval smaller so uh, if you want that to be you know the way you deal with it so you probably need to make this guy the interval both controlling the thickness and the interval values so you don't need to do that twice, I'm just going to make this 5 again now we have this, if you can see what I mean so it's slicing it vertically and generating for you uh, a nice way of representing your work or you just you want to make sliced and uh, you make this mesh thing like a 0.3 and then you overlapped it with the horizontal node that we have to create uh, to create a, a different way of laser cutting representation of your model. Anyway, I wish that you find this video useful, guys. Please uh, like it and share it uh, if you find that useful. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day. Bye bye.